Well, welcome to the Global Pain Association's program today. We're delighted to have you on board. I'm Ron Aaron Eisenberg, and I have the pleasure of serving as your MC for, for this program. I also MC a number of medical shows, so I'm very comfortable and at home dealing with global pain. Millions of people suffer from it, and we hope through the GPA, the Global Pain Association, uh, to bring people some hope, some help, and some relief. Today's program is dedicated to a pain warrior in our Global Pain Association family, Rebecca Christofferson. Rebecca's in the hospital, and our prayers and positive vibes are welcome. We welcome you to join us to help her with her recovery. Becky is kind, funny, brilliant, a wonderful wife and mother, a loyal friend, a dog lover, and she's been a great guest here on the Global Pain Association. So we wish her the very best and a very speedy recovery. Get well, Becky. Today's topic is from the Himalayas to the clinic, Tibetan mind-body practices for health and well-being with Dr. Alejandro Chaul, founder of the Jung Center's Mind, Body, Spirit Institute in Houston. And today's weekly sponsor is the Alamo Area Council of Governments. Being older, a veteran, or disabled, the Alamo Area Council of Governments is here for you with various services. Including assistance for mortgage and rent, groceries, medication, and even legal assistance. And if you live in one of the 12 counties surrounding Bear, these services, including public transportation, are also available to you. And the Alamo Area Council of Governments is here to help. Please call the Alamo Service Connection today or visit their website for more information. ACOG as one of our sponsors. And if you have a question, go to www.askasc.org. Now we're delighted to welcome Dr. Susan Blackwood to our Global Pain Association program, president of the Global Pain Association. Hey, Susan. Ron, it's so good to be back today. And I know we've got an enlightening presentation. I'm really looking forward to it, as well as all of our followers. You know, we're now reaching about 49,000 people with our series that started in May. And it has really overwhelmed us in terms of exceeding our expectations on how many people we're reaching. And hopefully people will want to continue to look on our website, globalpain.org, and participate either as a volunteer or as a donor. We need all the help we can get to get the series going into next year. Well, it's been very exciting bringing these programs to, uh, to all of our viewers. And we've had many from around the world who have said thank you for the information. If you're just joining us and uh, uh, you're on the Global Pain Association website, I ask you to share this. If you click share, uh, you can send it out to your list of friends and uh, we expand our base that way. And we thank you for doing that. Lisa's already on board. If you can share us, Lisa, that would be absolutely great. Now, I want to introduce our very, very special guest. And Susan, thank you for lining him up. We're, we're delighted to welcome Dr. Alejandra Chaul, the younghouston.org is where you find him. He is founder and director of the Young Center's Mind, Body, Spirit Institute in Houston, a student of the Tibetan Buddhism since 1989, he even studied with the Dalai Lama. He teaches Tibetan meditation to cancer patients, their families, and caregivers at the MD Anderson Cancer Center's Integrated Medicine Program. He was recently named a fellow of the Mind and Life Institute. Dr. Joe, welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. What is it that attracted you to uh, Buddhism and the whole concept of mind, body, spirit? Sure. So I was born in Argentina, which is a very Catholic country, uh, but I grew up in a Jewish family. And I always uh, had interest for different traditions, but really what prompted my interest was um, I, I used to have what I called um, existential attacks. So I would have this really um, feelings of I'm gonna die and then what? And I would sweat, I would, uh, I would really feel really anxious. And then somehow uh, a book came to my lap 
called Siddhartha, which was uh, later I realized it was the life of the Buddha. But really what was interesting was that they talk about the suffering of birth, old age, sickness, and death. And I started investigating. Well, he has dropped off. We'll try to get him back. I want to ask him about the whole concept of from the Himalayas to the clinic, Tibetan mind-body practices for health and well-being. And, and Dr. Chaul, as soon as we get you back, we'll do that. In the meantime, maybe we can bring Susan on and have a chance to uh, uh, talk with her as well. Because <coughs> my screen uh, has gone black. I apologize for that. But we've got a technical issue that uh, I'm sure uh, our technical producer, uh, Gina Galavis Eisenberg, is working on. So be patient, stay with us, and we're going to get everybody back on. Now we've got Gina on. We need to bring maybe Susan back if we can't get uh, Dr. Chaul, who disappeared. And I guess the question is, should I uh, reboot as well? I'm here. I don't know. This is the new age, by the way, the new normal. Uh, nothing you, is face to face. Can you Nearly see? Nearly everything is uh, on a platform. Can you, Ron, can you see? We haven't had this problem before. Ron, can you so hear? So see me if we can uh, get us back and going. I am here. I'm going to reload the site. Okay, I think we're back. I'm here. Can you see me? Uh, yes, it's a miracle. I can see <laughs> it. It's the uh, spirit of mind, body, and spirit. Uh, let me ask you before we risk losing you again. The concept of the, uh, from the Himalayas to the clinic, uh, how does that tie into patients and doctors? Sure. So uh, basically these are practices oh that originally come from the Himalayas. That's why I call them like that. Um, I, I was able to train uh, in, in India and Nepal and, and partly in Tibet. And, um, and so with that, when I did my, I was back, I came then to Houston to do my PhD in religious studies. Um, and then I had both a teacher and my own father with cancer. And, um, and that prompted me to start volunteering at MD Anderson. And, and they had just started something called the Place of Wellness. And, um, and they welcomed me. They said, do it for six months and then see. And I stayed for 20 years uh, doing uh, not only clinic, but also research in this area. Um, and that's uh, how we work both with patients and caregivers, as well as the um, clinicians and researchers work with a lot of people who are in pain. Is there a difference between our physical pain and the relationship we have with pain? Yes, that's a that's a great question. And, and a lot of it has to do uh, with stress. So, um, you know, when we talk about stress, we have two main aspects of stress, the acute stress, which is what we call the fight or flight response, where, you know, what we are in a situation that we are trying to cope with and we go kind of into our inner Rolodex uh, and, and we're trying to see what, what tools do I have to cope with this? And if I find a tool, I do that, I either fight that or I say, I don't have the tool, I fly. Now, sometimes like in a situation in COVID, like in a situation with chronic pain, what happens is I have one situation that gives me this stress, another situation, another, and it builds up. We get into this chronic situation of pain, um, of, of stress, and that exacerbates our pain. What we have seen, it exacerbates the pain. It brings, it really damages our relationship, both with ourselves and the way that we relate to our pain. We get into depressive symptoms and we get sleep disruptions. And in place, in, in times like this with COVID, loneliness. Now, luckily, around 40 years ago, Dr. Herbert Benson in Harvard uh, um, found what he called the relaxation response, meaning that through 
practices of meditation and breathing, you can rebalance the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system, finding a way to be relaxed either, even in the midst of stress. So that's why we brought these practices to help people, not only with cancer, but going through different aspects of pain. As I listen to this, I wonder, uh, can meditation ever replace medication? And if so, how? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I used to have a talk that I called medication and meditation. They're not an odd couple. So when we, at Integrative Medicine, actually, we don't say do not take the medication. This is not alternative medicine. We do it complementary and actually integrative. So do what you have to do. Now, what are the side effects of those medicines? What are the side effects of your chemo, of your uh, you know, radiation? And we can work with those side effects through different practices like meditation. And so I, I wouldn't say that it replaces it, but we do it together with. So what you see here, these are uh, practices that we did at the clinic. These are actually a patient and a caregiver. Um, and we're doing some of the Tibetan yoga movements that um, I've researched uh, with a group of other people at MD Anderson, seeing how we can have uh, effects in sleep, in pain, in, um, in well-being, uh, and of course, in stress and anxiety. Um, what's interesting too is, unfortunately, uh, sometimes we think of stress as just something that impacts our just general well-being, although that's really important, but sometimes oncologists don't find it that interesting. But actually, uh, Anil Sood and others in, in MD Anderson found that stress goes all the way to affect the tumor microenvironment. Other people have found that it even affects our telomeres, which is the tips of every chromosome. So really, it's really important, this concept of self-care. So in integrative medicine, you as a patient are part of the uh, taking care of yourself. So it's not just leaving it to the team of physicians and nurses and so forth, but you are part of it. So you need to take intentional actions to take care for your physical, mental, and emotional health. And this goes also for the healthcare professionals. Now, how does the uh, concept of mindfulness fit into all of this? Of course. So, so mindfulness is one of the many practices of meditation within uh, the what I call from the Himalayas to the clinic. And, and sometimes it's like this really simple technique that I'm putting here called stop. And what I mean by that is, you know, we feel we feel pulled by stress. We feel our mind is behaving a little like a monkey going here and there. And so we need to say stop. So stop becomes an acronym. S is stop. So meaning I disengage from that stressor. T is I take a deep breath. So I do like what Herbert Benson said, breathe deeply. So I engage the relaxation response. And O is a moment of I observe, I notice how I feel and I breathe deeper. And I do this practice just for a few seconds, maybe a minute or two, two if I need to. And then I'm ready to proceed. But if I'm not ready, I keep on doing it for a little more until I rebalance the sympathetic and parasympathetic system and ready to re-engage. So that I would do whether I'm engaging with a patient or if I am a patient and I notice that I'm, I'm getting overstressed. So these are simple ways. Of course, what we do is then go from there to really teach different techniques that include mind, breath, body, and even sometimes mind, sound, uh, and body. Some I, people also include things as such, such as prayer and so forth. So one of the things uh, uh, that I created at the Mind, Body, Spirit Institute is this thing that I call CPR, which instead of being cardiopulmonary resuscitation, I call it compassional professional or personal renewal, because really one of the things that we lose when we're so stressed, when we're so almost burnout, is that compassion aspect, both for ourselves and for others. So we ha we need to renew ourselves, to reboot our system uh, through uh, these kind of practices. Now, I assume there's no cookie cutter approach when you are dealing with patients. What of the various practices we've talked about 
I work well with MD Anderson. Patients, or is it a mix? Yeah, so so it depends. We've done a number of different researches from you know things such as acupuncture uh, for dry mouth to meditation for uh, anxiety, a meditation for pain, uh, different kinds of yogas for different uh, practices, whether it's just including uh, improving movement and, and well-being to reduce intrusive thoughts. So we have a number of, of different practices that we use. And a lot of times, it's not just the effectiveness of the practice itself, but it's how the patient or the person relates to it. So some people relate more to one practice than the other. And so sometimes that is really important. How do you relate to practice? And then what I like to say is start creating your own meditation or mind-body toolbox and then use them when you need them. Now you mentioned to me off the air that you're a vegetarian. Has that contributed to your embracing uh, these philosophies? Yes. So actually, it, it came almost the other way around. So in my first trip to India almost 30 years ago, um, I realized that they were vegetarian. And the reason they were vegetarian there was not really because of health, or it was for health, but of the health of the animals. It was not trying to kill other beings. And I embraced that thought. And it felt really good to, to do that. And so uh, I started incorporating that and, and it felt well. I, I wouldn't say that sometimes it's not easy, uh, particularly, you know, both in Argentina and in Texas, it's very meat loving. Uh, so I had to do a lot of changes, but today is so much easier. Um, and, um, and we at MD Anderson, actually at Integrative Medicine, we do suggest not necessarily being totally vegetarian, but at least that every time you eat half of your plate should be vegetables. Um, and then just a, a quarter should be uh, protein and another quarter uh, could be um, uh, grains and so forth. And as a vegetarian, do you get enough protein? Yeah, I get a lot of protein. I use uh, from legumes. Uh, I also use tofu. I use tempeh. Um, so I also eat eggs. So I do eat, uh, I'm a, what they call an ovolacteo vegetarian. So I eat eggs and I do eat cheese and yogurt. Now we just have a couple minutes left, but what haven't I asked you that you'd like to add to this conversation? So I, I want to say that there's opportunities that I'm doing and many of them are available and free. Um, so um, I don't know, Gina, if you can put that slide, but there's um, in, in, in this website, there's one also before where, you know, I'm doing different kinds of meditation that are available to the public. And what we realize too is the importance of being in community. So we do these practices now in Zoom. So we all see each other, we talk to each other, and um, and we have every week a free opportunity um, online. I'm also doing a, a, a special retreat on December 5th and 6th for cancer patients and their caregivers. And then I'm doing a, a mini retreat at the end of the year called The Gift of Connection. So you can contact me at mbsihouston.org or directly to my hchaul at junghouston.org. My other one, alechaul.com, is the website. And the one underneath is the MD Anderson Integrative Med Center website. So I uh, hope uh, you join um, and uh, we can share different techniques that might be helpful for you. Well, I want to thank you so much uh, for coming on. It's been very instructive, and I know I've learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Ron, and thank you, Global Pain Association. Well, you take care. You too. This program uh, was brought to us by the Alamo Area Council of Governments, and we'd like to thank them for supporting today's segment. If, you know, if you are a veteran, disabled, or the, Alamo the Alamo Area Council of Governments is here for you with various services including assistance for mortgage and rent, groceries, medication, and even legal assistance. And if you live in one of the 12 counties surrounding Bear, these services, including public transportation, are also available to you. And the Alamo Area Council of Governments is here to help. Please call the Alamo Service Connection today or visit their website for more information. Governments. Susan Blackwood back. Uh, Dr. Blackwood uh, can give us an idea of how we all can invo get involved and the Global Pain Association. Susan, how do we hook up? 
Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to miss some of those upcoming clinics that our experts going to be conducting down the road because I learned a lot, just like you said today. Uh, especially that stop technique. I think that's going to work for even Susan Blackwood. So we're going to put that into uh, practice right away. But I really want to thank you and Ron, Ron and the Eisenberg Group for helping produce this week after week. I know it's a lot of commitment on your part and our speakers. The experts that have been with us week by week have done so much to uh, educate our community, uh, chronic pain patients and their caregivers. And we hope more people will get involved. We want to keep this series going. Uh, we don't know how long the pandemic uh, situation is going to continue, but we know the virtual series is going to be here because our board has approved this. So if you're a person uh, watching this or you're a company that has supported this and you want to continue to be involved with us, please go to our website, globalpain.org, and under Get Involved, you can be a volunteer, you can make a donation. And before the end of the year, we're going to really concentrate on some donations to keep the series going for the next semester or the next uh, term. So thank you again. And we just really can't thank people enough for making this all possible. Thank you, Susan. Appreciate it. Now we're going to take next week off uh, for the Thanksgiving weekend. We wish you all a uh, safe, socially appropriate distance Thanksgiving. In the meantime, in two weeks, Saturday, December 5th at noon here on Facebook, our topic is, do I qualify for disability for chronic pain? And that's a really good one. If you have questions you want to ask, email them to us at info at globalpain.org. Thanks for joining us. On behalf of GPA, I'm Ron Aaron Eisenberg. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.